And I knew while she was testing me that something was wrong. In subjects like English and social studies, I did just fine. I had excellent grades, but then I was failing math and science, and we couldn't figure out why. Eventually, we figured out it's because the teacher is facing the board in math and science, and I wasn't able to read their lips. Tests revealed that Sarah Vermette suffered from profound hearing loss at a young age. Although her parents spent thousands of dollars on a variety of hearing aids, it wasn't until she had cochlear implant surgery while living in California that her situation improved. And then the sound goes in through your skin into the part that's inside of you, travels down the cable from your head and into the electrode in your ear. And then those electrodes stimulate the dead hair cells and then it goes to your brain as sound. Isn't that amazing? The incredible impact cochlear implants can have for individuals with significant hearing loss is something researcher Ali Reza Rahani has seen firsthand. Someone in my family was born with profound hearing loss. So seeing that uh, through my undergraduate studies kind of derived me and motivated me to work in the research. Like Sarah, Ali Reza's niece, Miriam, saw significant improvements in her hearing following the surgery. But the process also made him realize the technology is far from perfect, and he began to think about ways to improve it, which led him to move to Canada and change his field of study. He began working with fellow University of Western Ontario researcher Luke Helpert, first in London and then here in Saskatoon. Each person's cochlea, the, the organ where the cochlear implant actually sits, varies quite drastically. However, cochlear implant procedures have traditionally been done and continue to be performed in a general approach. So every patient gets a one-size-fits-all approach. While traditional cochlear implants improve basic functional hearing, the pair wondered if they could improve fine hearing in patients, which, among other things, would allow them to appreciate something most of us take for granted. It's actually been found right now that the majority of cochlear implant patients do not enjoy listening to music, and they can't discern things like emotion and mood and things like that for music that we can. It can be very problematic for cochlear implant patients, and it's, it's a real detriment to their quality of life. In this regard, Vermette considers herself lucky. Her cochlear implants actually improved her ability to appreciate music but she is familiar with another problem associated with the implants, the trauma that can be caused by the surgery itself. The researchers believe that this and other issues that arise from receiving cochlear implants are related to the process by which a patient's cochlea is mapped, which they are seeking to improve. What we learned off the cochlear anatomy we can use um, to essentially develop some software that can take a patient's image from, a, say, a clinical CAT scan or CT scan in a hospital and can map out their full anatomy and plan the cochlear implant procedure to help the surgeons better customize it. To do this, they realized they needed to study the cochlea at a microscopic level, which is how they ended up here at the CLS Synchrotron on the campus of the University of Saskatchewan. The Canadian Light Source is a national research laboratory where we take very bright light to look at the nature of materials and how materials are put together. It is a tool that touches almost every area of science in Canada. Uh, it really does allow those researchers to answer those fundamental or very applied questions that they can't get answers in their, labor their home laboratories or their universities or within their industry. Oh, we actually put it here oh, and then scan it by support. In this case, the researchers are using both human cadaver and mice cochlea at the CLS's Beamit line, one of the few facilities in the world that can do this type of work. Using light millions of times brighter than the sun, an image is generated with 100 times the detail of a CT scan. That helps us seeing how implants are sitting inside the cochlea, how, uh, uh, what are the anatomical features that we haven't been seeing before. And this is the stuff that we do here are compared to techniques that might take a, almost a year. So we could do it in a couple of hours. Having access to the Canadian light source makes us one of the few groups in the world that are really 
equipped to solve this problem at the capacity that we are. I think it's fascinating, especially that they're doing that research here in Saskatoon. I think that's astounding. That's really why these tools become very valuable, because that's what they're here to do, is help improve the quality of life of Canadians. For Sarah, quality of life improvements might mean just being able to be more social, as they would allow her to go to places where audio levels are high. To go to a bar where there's all this background chatter and music, um, it's really difficult to, you know, follow a conversation. I mean, even hearing people have trouble in that situation. So you throw in the added problem of having a hearing loss in that situation and it's it doesn't become an enjoyable thing to do anymore. The solution may not be far off. Halpert and Rohani say if all goes well, the results of their work will roll out incrementally over the next few years. And if we can come up with software, algorithms, procedures that can customize these procedures, it'll help not only every future patient that'll receive a cochlear implant, but every patient that's currently, currently living with a cochlear implant as well, because we can go back and look at their scans and get them to come in and, you know, kind of retroactively customize it farther to help them out. So this has the potential to impact hundreds of thousands of people right now and, and millions of people going forward. For her part, Vermet is excited about the possibilities offered by this and other cochlear research and is optimistic significant improvements will be made in her lifetime. At the same time, she's grateful for what she has learned through her hearing impairment. If someone came to me and said, you know, you'll be able to hear again, would you give up your experience of not having a hearing loss? I would absolutely say no, because I learned so much about being human, about being compassionate um, through having hearing loss. I wouldn't give up that experience.